Uh, so my wife is still in the cities. Our daughter had one more day of school, and uh, man, that would have meant a lot to her. Uh, anybody that's a legislator and married and uh, rural, uh, it is a, it's a sacrifice to do. But, and yet we respond, we love to do it, uh, and yet you have this tension of, of family, and many of you are here because you, you care about family. And uh, that's why many of us go down there, because we care about what the family looks like. And uh, so, Michelle, that, thank you for that. So, well, I've got good news and bad news. I'm going to give you the bad news first. Uh, the governor, Governor Dayton, just vetoed a ton of good Republican bills. We wanted to help mining up in this area, just north of here, and uh, the wild rice standards for mining and water that's produced or, or that comes out of mining was 50 times uh, greater than what you would have for drinking water. In other words, 10 parts per million for wild rice sulfate, but drinking water's 50 times that, and yet we couldn't get that done twice. He vetoed that bill twice. We, had, uh, we wanted to get the pipelines running through Minnesota. We just thought that that made a lot of sense. It increased property tax values. It was uh, the most efficient and safest way for oil to come through. He vetoed that. We had a bill that addressed the opioid abuse issue, provided resources that people could, uh, there was pilot programs that were actually working to deal with that issue. He vetoed that. He vetoed a bill that dealt with elder care abuse. Uh, if, if you recall, his agency had boxes and boxes of complaints that they didn't bother to respond to, and the, the legislative branches, re, House and, and Senate, controlled by Republicans, took action. He vetoed that. We had a bill that said if you, uh, you block light rail, you block highways, it's a bigger offense. It's, it's not a game anymore. He vetoed that, and the very next day, they blocked the light rail. We had a tax bill that lowered the tax bracket, the lowest tax bracket and the middle class tax bracket. We actually lowered that while we conformed to the federal government. He vetoed that. It was sort of like everywhere we turned, a good Republican idea got vetoed. That was the bad news. You know what the good news is? There's no more vetoes. There's no more bills that we have to bring before Governor Dayton. He is done. And I got to tell you, uh, you know, just uh, it was such a privilege to have the GOP having the House and the Senate. I've told many of you that it's, it's the second time in 46 years that that has happened, second, only second time, and yet it was two out of the last three. And so, suddenly we're at this moment where we actually could have the House, the Senate, and the Governor at the same time, and what could we do? And I really, the, 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 I'm convinced uh, with, with Speaker Dowd, the House will retain its, its majority. The Senate, we actually have a winner-take-all race. Senator Fishbach is, has resigned, and we have a, a winner-take-all race because it's 33-33. So whoever wins that takes all, but I'm confident uh, that we will have a strong candidate there to win there. And then the governor race. And so I'm confident that we can win all three of those, and if we do that, just think of what Minnesota can be. It'll, it'll be about a continually turning it red and redder and redder because people begin to see what Republicans really can do when we have the House, the Senate, the Governor. So I'm a raised eyebrow. That's about the level of my excitement, but I'm, I'm pumped. So <laughs> I had to laugh. I, I did a press conference after the Governor vetoed our bills and, uh, you know, I was ticked off. I mean, so I said, I, I, but I, I, I'm, I was angry and yet for me, angry is, if you see my angry, it's about a raised eyebrow. So I told somebody else, maybe they need to mime for me and say how really angry I was. But anyway, I digress. So this is the moment. And you know, I've been to a lot of these conventions, and it's super important, because this is where we begin to get together, and we begin to focus on what do we want to do. And we know that we're going we're to elect more congressmen that are Republican. We know we're going to do that. And it is about coming together, and that's what this is about. We come together, and we are all very, very different. I've noticed being majority leader, the difference between rural and suburban and inner city, sometimes we're worlds apart. And yet, this is where we come together. This is where we begin to really understand what we're all about.
that we are red, that we are Republicans, and that we can really make a difference. And lo and behold, there's a bunch of fighting and jostling between who's going to get to the top. But at the end, at the very, very end, when we come down to it and we're running with all our might through September and October into early November, it has to be that we are all on one page with one voice and we're all totally engaged to see the victor. And that, that's where I'm in, I want to encourage all of you that once this is all over, once the dust settles, no matter what, that we are all one because that's how we win. In fact, there's a psalm, I think it's Psalm 127, but it says, behold, how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell in unity. And that is where the Lord commands the blessing. So you think about whoever you like, at whatever seat, whatever race, just know that in the end, we're all Republicans and us together is way more powerful than us divided. And there's been so many phrases throughout our beginning and throughout life. You know, we, either, we either hang together or we hang apart. You know, join or die. Musketeers, we're all for one and one for all. But you think about that there's this moment where we have to be one. And so once we go through this, well, thank you. Once we go through this, we got to be one. So my commitment is to give every shot, every breath I've got, every, pow every energy that I have to see people into victory in the end. But I'm saying all join together and, and let's, let's do amazing things for Minnesota. Thank you.